we were able to increase our um, donor income from our dinner, um, we doubled it. So we went from about a seventy thousand dollar income last year to a hundred. We're at about one hundred forty one thousand as of our last commitments, but they're still coming in. We're making those phone calls right now to our um, guests and those who donated. My name is Tracy Bognuda. I'm the Executive Director for Lifeline Pregnancy Center in uh, the Central Coast of California. After our last year's um, banquet, we came together and looked at the statistics as it had been done in the past for many years and realized we needed to make a big change. So one of the things that we um, enjoyed hearing about was the fact that the name storming was going to be reaching um, outside of our normal guest list because the challenge we were having was we had the same table hosts um, join us and they always paid for their table and then invited their guests and it gave them, if they paid for their table, they felt they had the right to invite whomever they wanted to invite, whether they gave or not. And so with all the churches buying a table and returning table hosts purchasing a table, they would invite uh, people within their friend group or their congregation as more of an appreciation. And so we were finding that they just weren't um, becoming donors. And so we were seeing that um, our donor list hadn't grown. We hadn't received have any new donors and the people that did come felt just as you and Jim had said that their um, table host already paid for them to be there. And so we needed to solve for that. And we needed to solve for um, the big um, speaker uh, cost. Last year, we spent almost $7,500 on the speaker. And so that was, again, money out of our pocket. And so as we sat and, and we're, we're like other pregnancy centers thinking that maybe we shouldn't do a dinner, maybe we should look at other ways to do that. We contacted Crew, which was so interesting that we had found somebody locally from Crew knowing that they had had such good success in fundraising. And we had a meeting with them and we brought in other strategists to help us um, and then we just kind of sat and rested and prayed on that information and just felt like crew has the formula that we wanted to um, emulate, but, you know, we weren't sure where to get started. And so as we got started in February, you know, we had a whole different plan in mind. And then we found out about fundraising masterminds. And so we put the brakes on our very initial planning because everything just sounded like what we were looking for. We didn't want to charge our table hosts, although that was really scary to the our board chair who had been a director and had brought me the manual, as you had mentioned, and wasn't ready to stray from um, what, you know, has always been done. Myself being a fairly new director, you know, I was open to change and some of the new board members were open to change. And um, so it was a very welcome change. I think that it answered some of the questions we had. And with the name storming, that allowed us to reach beyond the normal people. But it gave us a great foundation on the who to invite. And so we were able to increase our um, donor income from our dinner. Um, we doubled it. So we went from about a 70 thousand dollar income last year to a hundred. We're at about one hundred forty one thousand. Um, as of our last commitments, but they're still coming in. We're making those phone calls right now to our um, guests and those who donated. So what would you tell someone who is a pregnancy center or just a nonprofit leader uh, who they've never heard of the perfect vision dinner before? They don't even know what it is. How would you describe it to them? I would describe the Perfect Vision Dinner as a formula that's been um, tried and tested. And that's really what we were looking for because, you know, every year I think pregnancy centers are going to try something new. They're going to add a silent auction or live auction. They're going to, you know, add a different type of speaker. Um, you know, they're going to bring in different entertainment. They're always trying different ways. And this is something that solves for uh, the pregnancy center having to put 
you know, put things on the line to try something that you've never tried and not sure if it's going to work. This, we appreciated Jim's experience, your experience. We um, had already signed up for Fund Easy, so we'd used that for our golf tournament. And I'd have to say that was a big perk to the whole process was the registration program. Um, so I would say the whole package is a benefit. Um, and again, being that you and Jim have the experience you have, it's not us having to reinvent the wheel. What would you say to a board member who is looking at the, the cost, you know, 4282, and they're saying, this is a really expensive course. Uh, why should I invest this much money into a course? I would say that the, the return on the investment shows uh, in the way that we doubled our income from the dinner. So we were able to get that money back. It is also, we considered the fact that what we'd spent for a speaker last year was not going to be a part of the budget this year. And so um, we can show for that same, um, that money um, and just utilize it in a way that have long-term um, benefit. What was the number one thing that you learned in the in the course itself? Like as we were going through, did you have any like aha moments where you're like, oh, I never thought about it this way? Or what was that for you or different people in your team? I think um, it was the value in bringing new people in all the way around. Um, you know, we had we had kind of followed the scripture. I have it in front of me just by chance. It says, um, it's from First Chronicles 4.10. It says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me. And so our theme was the ripple effect. And not only were we looking for um, a larger income, but we were looking to enlarge our territory for the long term, meaning that we wanted people who had not really understood or known much about our ministry to be present so that they can share it with their friends. And we we have received um, you know, texts and and emails saying that, you know, they had no idea of the services that we had provided to the community and they're just fully on board. So I think. I think that was really the big takeaway because it was it was the problem we were trying to solve, which was how do we really methodically meet and invite new people to enlarge our territory in our we have a pretty small community. And so but we needed to do that in our community. And um, that really was, I would say, successful.